Welcome to episode 134 of Stage Worthy. I'm your host, Phil Rickaby, and this is the Toronto Fringe Roundup. And uh, I'm here with uh, a, a wide variety of, of Fringe artists. Why don't we start on my left, Danny Padgett. Uh, introduce yourself and uh, talk a little bit about your show. Cool, yeah. Um, my name's uh, Danny Padgett. I, uh, I wrote and directed a show called Prank. Um, uh, it's about uh, the daughters of internet celebrities. Uh, um, it takes place 20 years in the future, and it's about them dealing with the legacy that their their parents uh, left for them. Mm -hmm. um, it's loosely based on a true story about uh, a YouTube account called Daddy of Five, where uh, these two parents uh, would prank their, their their children to try to get famous on YouTube. <laughs> and eventually it got worse and worse and worse, and, and people were watching the videos being like, this is child abuse. This is not, <laughs> this is not fun, and this no. is child abuse, and their, their children got taken away. Oh Holy shit! Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's it's sort of based on a like, or it's it's. I use that as a jumping off point. Um, okay. Uh, it's <clears throat> and it's, it's just talking about the, the race for internet fame. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. There is one. <laughs> there is one. Yeah. In fact, yes. Yeah. Tom. Um, hi. So I'm Tom McGee, uh, and then I wrote and directed a piece called Featherweight, which um, was inspired by a really long TTC ride where I was thinking about Egyptian mythology, as one does. <laughs> and um, it occurred to me that uh, in today's day and age, the thing we'd be most worried about getting judged isn't our heart, but our internet history. Um, <laughs> and I just read a great article about a book called Everybody Lies about how uh, big data is actually telling us a lot about the human condition because no one lies to Google. We'll lie to our therapists, we'll lie to our doctors, because we want the person we're talking to to like us, but with Google... We'll just vomit whatever we're thinking directly into the search bar. So there's a whole bunch of really interesting information coming out about sort of bi uh, biases, but also fears, um, and a lot of things. And it's like any time you fill in a Google bar and it, f it finishes it for you with like, how do I? And it's like, stop crying. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> um, so uh, my story is about a guy who uh, finds himself suddenly dead and he wakes up in his favorite bar in Toronto and he realizes his, uh, his soul is going to be judged by ancient Egyptian gods. Um, however, they're also going to judge his browser history because the gods have an agenda of their own and are trying to figure out whether they're good or bad. So the best way they can think to do this is to throw it all on a mortal and see what comes out of it. <laughs> okay. Wow. It's a comedy, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, hi, I'm Rebecca Perry. I'm producing Bike Face. Uh, I didn't write it, uh, and I also didn't direct it, but let me tell you about it and what attracted me to the project. So Bike Face is the real account of Natalie Phrygia biking from Halifax all the way to Vancouver by herself on the road. It's about all the people she encounters. There's a lot of strange people in Canada, um, especially in the prairies. <laughs> but anyways... Um, uh, it's, but it's also about uh, testing yourself, uh, pushing yourself to the limits, doing something because you want to, and not letting anybody's opinions about what you're doing stop you from doing it. Uh, it, it very much has uh, the message of like, if you want to go and take an adventure, just do it, because there's going to be a million reasons why you shouldn't, but the only reason you should listen to is you want to go. Mm. Um, and what attracted me to this project was I had actually seen it in workshop format a few years ago. It was just one story, because she essentially tells one story per province. Uh, she told the story of her in Saskatoon meeting this, this guy who basically stopped drinking at 18 and then just started collecting Wild West memorabilia. As you do. As you do, <laughs> right? Um, and so she talks about like staying in this guy's Wild West mansion and thinking he maybe was an axe murderer, but instead he's just this like friendly old guy <laughs> who like collects things. At, mm -hmm. And... Uh, and anyways, I just I have also biked from Halifax to Montreal, so I just wow. loved hearing the story of someone who made it the whole way over. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really inspiring, really cool. And our actress, Claire Blackwood, kicks ass. <laughs> I was in line to see uh, Alla Francis, I Think I'm Dead, yeah. and this woman in front of me just could not stop talking about how amazing Claire was Aww. in Bike Face. Oh, she, so I was so, so proud amazing. of her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. It, it has sincere moments, but it is also still a comedy. Yeah. yeah. I'm Belinda Corpus. Um, I did not write any of the fringe things. It's <laughs> a weird way of saying that. Um, but I'm in uh, Lighters in the Air, which was written by Chris Hagen and directed by him. And he also plays um, one of the, well, he plays the main character in the show. Um, and it's basically about um, the community of like open mic, like an open mic community in um, Toronto in a fictional bar called The Empty. It's a site specific at the Monarch. Um, and it's just about, um, dreams and whether you want to pursue your dreams uh, 
versus reality and stability and mm. um, sustaining a, an artist's career, basically. And what attracted me to the project was the fact that it was a very unconventional musical, it, all original music. <clears throat> um, being a songwriter myself, I, I was attracted to the character that I play, who is a songwriter, so that was mm. really cool. So it's very close to home in that sense. And yeah, it's nice. great. Very nice. Linda's an awesome songwriter and singer. I'm Janelle Hanna. I'm in Robert, uh, which is written by Brianna Brown and co-directed by Brianna and Rob Kempson. Uh, Robert is about a brother and a sister, Kat and James, who are waiting in a hospice for their father to die. And right before that happens, uh, James reveals a secret he's been holding on to since childhood and everything kind of gets turned upside down. Um, it's also site specific. We're doing it at uh, St. George the Martyr Church, which is in Grange Park. It's a beautiful space. It's also called the Music Gallery. Some people know yeah, it as yeah, that. And um, yeah, uh, and there's bagpipes. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, it so, 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 so it is a comedy. It is a comedy. Yes, I just. Know I would like. I would like to point out yeah. that you play the bagpipes. Uh, for two months. I, yeah. yeah. But, so, so in this show, you you you. So you learned how to play the bagpipes uh, for this. For show. this show, yeah. How do your neighbors feel about you? <laughs> exactly right. So um, I split my time rehearsing actually at Brianna's house mm -hmm. and in the basement, and she has a pretty like concrete basement. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how her neighbors feel, um, <laughs> but my neighbors. I live in an actor house, and my neighbors. I don't know. I don't really talk to the downstairs, but the girls upstairs are lovely and came on opening and and super supportive and and didn't care and I'm like oh it was bad for Bless so long them. I know <laughs> it was bad for so long oh, yeah. too and I'm like god but um, I feel like you always earn brownie points though for learning something complex like yeah. Yeah. one yeah. thing if it's like I'm learning violin it's like a beautiful instrument but like oh god here she goes but like <laughs> yeah, yeah. bagpipes as an actor I'd be like oh boy that's a lot yeah. 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 you know what you do whatever you gotta do that's yeah. that's yeah. commitment to the cause yeah. I was Cute. intimidated by learning the accordion but bagpipes oh, I accordion too though yeah. like it's you know it's, it's, a, I don't know what it's this a lot. is how it goes you're, you're yeah. balancing yeah. on a lot it's like yes right now it's an excellent mind figure movie yeah so you guys know yeah Props oh, yeah. to you. Air accordion. <laughs> Air accordion, yeah. 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 Everybody's, everybody's opened now, right? Nobody's yes. still waiting yes. to open. Yeah. How many shows have you guys had so far? One. One. Three. 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 Yeah. Three. Yeah. Three as well. All the BYOVs. All the, all the sites yeah. Yeah. I mean, got BYOB, you gotta go hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Or you go home with no money. <laughs> <laughs> Two in my site specifically, but our third one's today. So. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I'm loving yeah. how many BYOVs there are this year, and yeah. in so many cool different locations. There's so many. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I definitely got the uh, the green like green eye of envy when uh, my pal was like, "Yeah, we're on a boat." I was like, oh, oh, "Come yeah. on!" Why didn't I think of it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna drag a boat into the paddock and just sit in there. Bring <laughs> <laughs> a canoe in there. It's Nico like, would be fine. It's not the strangest like, mm. thing that's ever happened. In the paddock. <laughs> not by a long shot. Um, so, how has uh, Fringe been going for you guys so far? Um, it can be a a, a long strange road to get to <laughs> yes. to fringe so so how, how's how's it been and i just want to say that this that um this is a safe space in terms of talking about fringe we all love fringe mm -hmm. and so if you have a criticism don't feel like you can't say it because fringe never grows unless we criticize that's true so every theater <laughs> needs air conditioning <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. i will agree with you on that one yeah like are there which ones don't have air conditioning right now so well, I know for sure because I've seen a lot of shows in the factory backspace. It, although it has air conditioning, it, it's just too many shows are happening. Yeah. Every oh. day. Do they turn off the air conditioning when the show starts? Because I've been in some venues that do that. Yeah. It, you it can depends request on the show. It. Yeah. yeah, it depends on the show. Yeah. I know Annex has now said we're not turning it off for anyone. Yeah. Right? Thank you. Yep. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and they are they are like actively opening all the doors and like yeah. really trying to yeah. fix that because. Yeah. Also, that's one of the hot. And then you have St. Vlad's where, exactly. they give, where they give you a blanket when you yeah, come totally. in. It's because, Is it chilly yeah. in St. Vlad's? I think oh, it's yeah. always yeah. an ice box. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. St. Vlad's is well, the ice box. When you go in, they're like, yeah. they hand you this thick blanket and you're like, <laughs> oh what's God. this for? And they'll be like, you'll see. You'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. But it's 35? <laughs> it's, yeah. 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 St. Vlad's is, 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 is adjoined with, with a, a museum. Um, right, and so yeah. there's artifacts that oh, need to yes, be kept yeah. at like a specific te at a specific temperature there. So, yeah. um, so as a result, it's like an it's like an ice box. Yeah, wow. it's a, it is literally an ice box. So, so there's no middle store your lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> 
yeah. that's the best place to have your yeah. snack yeah. while the show's exactly. going. Yeah. 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 yeah, I always just get melt. a fringe slot <laughs> at St. Vlad's along with my other fringe slot, so I have a yeah. place to keep my lunch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's wow. an expensive, expensive place to keep yeah. yeah. But, but I'm fancy yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, but his food is so well tempered. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's excellent. Yeah. So yes, air conditioning at all the venues. I would certainly have appreciated some at our site specific. Yes, um, yes. I was saying just a little <laughs> earlier that like it's intermittently air conditioned in this community center. Yeah, mm-hmm. not anybody at Fringe's fault. This yeah. is the venue that that was selected for this show. Mm-hmm. And on Thursday, you know, before the temperature broke, yeah, so. um, it was hot in there. We arrived at five, and it was already a sauna. And it was like five of us in there. Mm-hmm. And we were like, so we have to do something. We open windows. There's no air movement. We've got one van going. Nothing happens. The show starts. I walk in. My glasses go and fog up. Whoa. And I'm like, well. I'm not, I'm, but everyone away. was just like, wow, what a great choice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great Strong choice. I think everybody right? How did he do that effect? Right? Did he get his glasses? No, everybody who was in that room knew exactly what happened. Because yeah, yeah. yeah, they were all like, yeah. I would have just been like, they are yeah. character glasses. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, sure, yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> You don't need to see, right? When he walks right Everybody would know that we're fake if I had like those lensless glasses people wear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, his eyes fogged up. (laughs) (laughs) That's how how humid it was in there. Yeah. So so how has how has fringe fringe been for you guys? I mean, site specifics have their own challenges, Mm -hmm. and people who are in the venues have have Mm -hmm. different challenges. But how have you guys generally found it? It's been good this this year. This year, I I have found so that that there there were a few big sort of changes that, that, that they made this year. And some of them, uh, like, I agree with a lot of the changes, like in like in effect and in, in why they're do- in why, are they, why they're doing them. Mm-hmm. I think that the changes came a little bit late in the planning stage of mm-hmm. of Fringe because the communication at times was like not. Was Could not some of it was a little specific rushed. about what I those, what those changes are. I, I I have I have a feeling that that they implemented the um, the the land acknowledgement thing after they created <laughs> the schedules. Because there was no time built into the schedules for the land acknowledgements, and now it's, yeah. it's in the 15 minutes while people are coming in, which mm. is sort of like I don't want to do that, but I also it's also it's not supposed to be part of our part of our, our slot, mm-hmm. right. like the right. time the yeah. time that you're performing. Yeah. I also think that like a land acknowledgement deserves full undivided yes. attention. Yes. 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 Um, yeah. And so basically, like we've had to sort of turn our music way up and then mm-hmm. just stop it so yep. people hear yep. that mm-hmm. look up yep. from whatever they're doing on their phone yeah. and actually mm-hmm. listen to what, yeah. what yeah. we're saying the land acknowledgement yeah. I have one concern about mandating that everybody does a land acknowledgement and I'm mm-hmm. all for the land acknowledgement mm-hmm. but yeah, my yeah. concern with that is that it becomes to turn off your cell phone that nobody pays attention yes. to yes a little bit yeah well in particular so um, uh, a show that I just did uh, players as well mm-hmm. here at the Transact and we had a land acknowledgement for the first mm-hmm. time which was great, and that was part of our pre-show announcement anyway, where the director mm-hmm. gets up and like talks everyone through the rules of the day. Yeah. So everyone had full attention, and it yeah. was wonderful. Yeah. Um, but what I agree, it's it's interesting. But the thing that I found when I was doing it was I wanted to make sure I was off book because mm-hmm. yes. Yes. yeah, you don't want to be reading from a paper. No, and it, it particularly for the um, the intent of it, and I think what what's um, I, I, I've seen it uh, a couple times now where uh, either volunteers read it or someone's read it, and it just doesn't quite have the same impact because no, then it is kind of the Here's my byword, and the thing is, though, that it is t- like as a you know white dude, it's terrifying, and I don't want to screw it up. Like yeah, the yeah, last yeah, thing yeah, I want to do yeah. is be like, "Hi, we're here to honor someone," and then just completely yes. shit the bed on it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like practiced the pronunciation before I. Did I, it. I, I so I did it uh, every day for two weeks on this other show, and I still muttered under my breath just mm. to like give myself like, yes. the confidence. So mm. I fully understand kind of that, but it. it the tone is so important that yeah. it almost does. It needs to almost be treated, uh, to your point, Rebecca, as almost a separate piece. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, hey, here's this thing. Yeah. And I, you know, I understand the necessity of putting it before the show, but also, like, for example, with Featherweight, this is the first time I haven't had uh, a song lead into a show, and I love, I love, right. like, I'm a sound designer myself. I love bringing the audience in with a killer track yeah. that takes the tone. Yeah. But I also don't want to be like, so you know, we respect all the storytellers who have been here before. We're on the high. Yeah. 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 Like, Show songs. <laughs> it's a bike trip, man. Oh, no. the, other thing, the other thing about it is that um, a lot of times, I think a lot of people don't know why we do it. Mm. Right. And it, yeah. I a had lot of go, the international companies. Were I also went and had like oh. for a while there. I was hearing the land acknowledgement, and the way that it always played for me was: white guy stands up and he takes off his hat and he gets very sad, very solemn, and he says this thing, and yeah. I go. Great. So here we got some white guy who's like yeah. paying lip service to the thing. So I was like, why is so many people doing this? So I research it and I find out 
that is part of the Truth and Reconciliation yes. Commission. Mm -hmm. It was requested by the the chiefs who were attending that. Yeah. Why don't we make that part of the acknowledgement? Absolutely. So that because there are a lot of people uh, who have the same reaction yeah, that I did because mm -hmm. they don't know why it's being done. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. But anyway, what what are what other uh, things have come up for you guys this week? Any any challenges? Any challenges for the site specifics? Yeah. Well, Berlinda, you go. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I was just gonna say like yesterday because because it's a bar where we're. Well, playing and some of the bar staff weren't aware oh no sure. so like right in the middle of this like very cathartic moment for the protagonist one of the waiters comes in and i'm like in my backstage and i'm like oh like the show's going on she's like i work here and i'm like no like a show is going on she's like but i work here i'm just supposed to set up the bar and i'm like no, there's like a theater show going on <laughs> oh, no. like read the sign like didn't your boss tell you yeah. so yeah. that's like kind of been like the <sighs> challenge of like who is told <sighs> The uh, staff you, that we have a show. One of the yeah. questions that you don't yeah. think you need to ask, that you need to ask yeah. is the, the venue well, and so when you go in. Yeah. So much happens at the Monarch, like Clown yeah. Fest was just there for like yeah, yeah, yeah. two months. Yeah, they have shows there all the time. Yeah. It's very yeah. surprising. And she's I very have, nice, but it was very much like a... <laughs> you had a fiper on it. Yeah. yeah. But I so want bad. to speak at full volume. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to clatter these pots. <laughs> <and pants. laughs> That's yeah. my thing. Basically, what it was it was like its own little performance in itself. And Don't I worry, I'm just going to drop to this camera. box in the yeah. rocket. Yeah. 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 Like, From Morocco Fest. Yeah. That was one of the fun little things that happened. I had a similar experience last year with Bendy Sign. Not 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 the exact not the exact same, but. um uh, Nico, Nico is lovely. He does, he he does shows there. This uh, the Featherweight's the, the third one at the paddock. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, but last year when we did Bendy Sun there with Sex T Rex, I was I was playing a puppet server. I was uh, I was going around with a puppet and and, and serving everybody in the bar during the show. Um, and beforehand uh, we would do we would do food, but the the the, the cook uh, the cook there that Nico had he was sort of independently contracted, but he his he he didn't care about the show he wanted to sell his food um, because that's how he was making his money and so he would start giving me notes on how I was serving like he would say hey could you sell more of my food and I was like I was like dude I'm I'm, I'm a puppet you can see the puppet on my yeah. arm don't tell me how to sell your food I'm trying but like also yeah. some people just don't want it so he started coming out in our pre-show and like and like S serving while I'm serving as a puppet, and I'm like, you're really breaking the reality here, dude. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> Where's your puppet? Baby? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get, make yourself a puppet, Take and then you can come up. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers yeah. for Bendy sign, and that guy, and that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know uh, this is sort of specific to our show, but I would love to hear if you guys have had any similar challenges. Um, so basically, as, as far as um, leading up to Fringe. It can go many different ways. Yeah. You can get um, a lot of the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Congrats, Janelle. <laughs> um, uh, you can get none of it, or you can get like a little bit like two days before, and yeah. you actually do, like the minute the press starts coming out, you have to re-strategize, especially as the yes. producer. Yeah, 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 yeah. You also have to manage the expectations of the mm -hmm. people you're working with. Um, so I know Claire Blackwood, she's a personal friend of mine, and um, we've done theater together throughout the years, but this was her first solo show, and as someone who is also a solo artist, mm -hmm. I was very protective mm -hmm. of that art, and I want her to have the best experience mm -hmm. possible, and it really colored, like, how far I was willing to go as a producer. <laughs> Guys, I just, like, I worked my tush off. Um, so essentially, it actually kind of taught me, like, if, if things aren't going your way, because we didn't have a lot of pre-press, mm -hmm. and stuff that we knew was coming, was taking forever to come. Yeah. For example, I had just like cold called the Globe and Mail and been like, there have been some cyclist deaths. There have also just been a lot of bad politics surrounding cyclists in yeah. Toronto. Mm -hmm. We're doing a show about biking across Canada. Yeah. We talk about those politics. Why don't you interview our writer who is now a doctor because she just got her PhD. Yeah. I'm sure you guys would like to hear what she has to say. Right. So they interviewed her, oh, a casual five and a half weeks ago. The article came out today. Oh my God. Oh my God. Wow. So we were like, waiting and like praying, uh, being like, Ave Maria, bring this article uh, out. Uh, and it just came out and it is very much helping us. Mm -hmm. But until it came out, we very much had to just sort of do the like grass markets advertising yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. What have sort of your experiences been with pre-press leading up to the show and just sort of all that kind of stuff? Because yeah. it is an important part of it. It's French. very important. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, like, uh, uh, I always just like the lists start to come out. Everybody, right. like, everyone, everyone has a list, <laughs> and um, uh, and so I just start like the, like counting the list. But that, but eventually it starts like like 
early early pre press, mm -hmm. you're like you, like you, people pay attention to it, and then it just starts to become a bit of a wash. Yeah. It's true. It doesn't because... matter as much when the festival starts. No, mm -hmm. no. It's, yeah. Everyone is like hinging on it at the yeah. beginning. Yeah. Well, it's because because up until like when the tickets are on sale, yeah. Like the tickets go on sale, and now since in Toronto we can buy 100 percent of the tickets up front. Yeah. Um, those Which many people have opinions. Of. Those yes, but and I also. Yes. But you yeah. know, on that note, does anyone want a postcard? <laughs> <laughs> we'll all flyer each other once we're done. Yeah, 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 um, it's it's the um, like those lists. People sometimes make their choices mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the their for that first weekend based on those lists. So it yeah. can be mm -hmm. super important to get on them, but yeah. they're also yeah. like subjective. Totally. Like so yeah. subjective. You know? totally. Makes you appreciate that it, there's multiple publications. Oh yes. 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 Yeah. No, I was just gonna say like producing, we all kinda have a hand in it, uh, for Robert. for Robert. But one thing we did is we did like a thirty day plan for June. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. planned everything mm -hmm. out and we had all this stuff and then even if we weren't getting the list or, or that kind of stuff, we still had stuff we were you this know, and so it's like such a happy bonus when it happens. But mm -hmm. Producing for Fringe too is just such a specific beast, yep. mm. and sometimes there's that element of the unknown and element like uh, yeah. that you can't control. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, Did, so, would you agree you have to change your strategy at the drop of a hat? Yeah. 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 Like, actually, I was gonna say I love that you guys spotlighted all the BYOVs this year. I thought mm. that was really smart mm. as yeah. producers cool. because there were so many this year. Yes. So yeah. It was cool. We. Uh, yeah. We just. I don't know. Want to show some love because it's hard being yeah. site specific yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Like. You know, if you're in a place that's had a lot of uh, shows before, mm -hmm. but if you're not, yeah. like, um, you're just not in people's minds. And yeah. if you don't have other shows going on at your venue, you don't get that kind of support. Yeah. So we want to. I think it's also difficult because this year they have all of those venues that are outside yeah, of the school. Yeah. Um, that's true. It's really spread out this year. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I know because when I was talking to Lucy, the idea was that the they were. The whole idea was that they would be taking fringe to people who don't usually mm -hmm. right. see fringe, which I think to be honest, is a kind of a naive outlook. Because those are not the people who are going to Fringe. Yeah. It's still the same people who are normally going to Fringe. Yeah. But now we're asking them to track a little further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, also, I I had assumed that they would give some extra, you know, some promotion extra yeah. to those yeah. shows. Yeah. But it's been radio silence on those. Yeah. 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 So they it's haven't tricky. really, like, Fringe hasn't really talked about those. But Fringe only talks about the shows that they think are gonna yeah yes. the sure things yes yeah. so, so I haven't really promoted any of the off fringe it's interesting though I mean so this is my ninth year consecutive year doing fringe in mm -hmm. some capacity and mm -hmm. it's been fascinating watching the festival change and the thing is um, there's usually been something like this every year yeah right mm -hmm. and it's yeah. because the festival is constantly evolving and changing mm -hmm. and trying to figure out what works and what doesn't mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting too having done a few of the other fringes around Canada seeing how they deal with these issues mm -hmm. so like, yeah. even Vancouver it's a very condensed fringe, and then the cult, which is easily the worst name of a venue I've ever heard, <laughs> yeah. um, is like way the hell up, way the hell up north. The it's, it's not it's the cult. The C U L. Yeah, it just, it, it's it's Klingon. Uh, oh yeah. boy, the cult. Um, you have to fight an honor duel to get in. Um, but um, it's even just that that space. It, it's a little bit. Um, like uh, I guess Tarragon's sort of the furthest mm. north we've got right, right yeah. now, yeah. but it, but even it, then it's not that far. No, I, I know, but it's about. I, I guess the closest <laughs> thing would be like if Old Solar Stage was like a fringe. Yeah, yeah, right. It's yeah. like we've got yeah, all this stuff downtown. Yeah. Oh, or you could go to North York for this one <laughs> show you want to see, and it's going to burn the rest of your day right. to get there and back, right. um, which hurts um, their ticket sales. Which hurts their yeah. ticket sales immensely because yeah. it becomes an yeah. island. So it becomes the show, and I, I would argue with a lot of the these the sort of mm. um, uh, satellite venues, it becomes. You almost need to have several shows in one satellite venue, yeah, which they won't, it, which they won't do. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because yeah. they won't let you split um, a show between. So yeah. And, and yeah. what I'm noticing this year, John, and this kind of brings uh, ties back into <clears throat> what my experience of producing this year has been, is it, it's it's interesting seeing there's a really big push and pull going on right now in Toronto Fringe specifically between kind of the, the spirit of Fringe and the machine of Fringe. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Very that, much so. um, mm -hmm. The spirit of Fringe is very much like, hey, you give us the mo like you give us your entry fee, we give you space, and that's all on you. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we, we're, we're here to be a support structure, mm -hmm. but then after that, it's all you. Yeah. And like, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, we've got our, our press angles and stuff for the festival, but like, they're not your press angles, they're our press angles. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we need to like run the festival, and that's how we're going to do it. Yeah. 
Um, and what's interesting is some years I felt a tremendous amount of freedom as an artist to do whatever the hell mm. I want, and and oh, but also the pressure of knowing like it's up to us to market. Yeah, yeah. we can't expect anything. That's fine. It's yeah. not their job to provide that for us. Mm -hmm. This year I'm finding it's almost a weird hybrid where and they've done enough that it kind of feels like they're they're doing promotions, mm. but also they're also trying to like they've yeah. got this crazy like fundraising target. Mm -hmm. They've also there's. I don't know, so I mean, uh, uh, this is a much larger argument, but like, there's a lot of push and pull going on even between things like the Fringe Tent, yep. where the rebranding, I think, is very clever. I understand why they're doing it, uh, but as someone who gently rebranded it last year myself as Thunderdome... <laughs> um, I bought the t-shirt. Still right? have the t-shirt. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, I'm starting to feel... I don't... Sorry, this is a, like a, a weird deep dive, but like, I'm, I don't know if I'm allowed to engage with the Fringe the way I want to anymore. Right. right? Because last year, I, I was missing Honest Ed so fucking much. Yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. even know if I wanted to go to Fringe. Right. Like, I was yeah. just so ripped up about it. Yeah. And then I went there the first day, and I was like, this is a delight, and it's silly, and there's like skateboarding kids who are trying to buy booze in the <laughs> yeah. town. And I was like, oh, shit, it's the Thunderdome. Now it's ours. Now it's fun. Like, yes. I, can, I can claim this yeah. thing as my own and engage yeah. with it. And this year I'm like, ah, I, I feel so sheepish even talking about it because I'm like, oh, but I don't want to fuck with your very your expensive, very, very passionate rebranding. Re yeah. yeah. And it's, I don't know, it's a weird feeling because I'm like, I want to have the fun that I've had at yeah. Fringe forever, but I don't know if I'm allowed to anymore. Right. Well, the interesting so, thing is that, is that now I see posters for Fringe and Postscript as yeah, a separate as a thing. Separate yes. Thing. Which sure. feels very strange. Yes. Which yeah. is very <clears throat> Edinburgh Fringe, and I think mm. I can kind of explain where that came from. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, Evely used to actually work at the Pleasance, which is one of the top four venues in Edinburgh Fringe, and they very much had a structure, uh, and they very much had a way of doing things. And one of the big things at Edinburgh Fringe is you not only have your theaters, but you have a separate immaculate patio where only the people in the Pleasance will go, or only the people at Gilded Balloon will go, and it is very separate. And so there's these little like nuclear families mm. all over Edinburgh Fringe. Mm. And so I think she was very much trying to make something, uh, well, her and her team, obviously, yeah. that resembled that, which I think is smart because... Edinburgh Fringe makes insane amounts of money in like bar sales and snacks mm. and all that stuff, mm -hmm. um, but it is a very different atmosphere for sure. And so I, I think from what I'm, what I'm hearing from you, you're sort of seeing that difference because well, everything is very heavily branded. And it here. also started with the Fringe a few years ago when they uh, when Next Stage really took off. And Next yeah. Stage is awesome. It's such a useful I thing. I love Next Stage. It. But um, you can notice this, the the shift in brand from. Oh, we're the Toronto Fringe Festival, and we also run Next Stage too. We are Toronto Fringe purveyors of Next Stage and the Fringe Festival of Toronto. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. And it was mm -hmm. that idea of uh, okay, well, we're stuck with the Fringe. Storefront did the same thing mm -hmm. when they shifted from the Storefront Theater to the Storefront Arts Initiative. Yes. So like, right. We, and we run the Storefront Theater, but the problem is you're known for your branding, so you got to yeah. keep that branding. Yeah. Because right. I, I guarantee you, if Toronto Fringe could be called something other than Toronto Fringe as the organization, they take that in a heartbeat for mm -hmm. exactly that reason. Right. Yeah. Which all makes sense. Yep. It just means that the way I, as an artist, engage with the fringe has changed and that's okay yeah um Feels but grown up this year it does but <laughs> the flip side of that is for these these venues that are out on the, the fringes um and all this mm -hmm. other sort of stuff there's a really odd dynamic where it's like well wait are, are we all out there in the woods alone mm -hmm. right or are we part of this kind of large organization where where do we fit in this yeah because yeah. i yeah I, I, I kind of feel like we're off alone and yeah. a yeah. fringe representative shows up and that's their the yeah. front of house manager mm -hmm. for a venue and a right. volunteer shows up but they have like I feel like there's virtually no signage like we were talking really? earlier yeah. about how you know I recall there used to be like some kind of banner right they yeah. they'd, they'd give like a flag for your BYU yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they yeah, don't yeah. have that the which, is, which is funny because because Postscript has the most signage I've yeah, ever seen yeah, for yeah, anything yeah, ever. I know. There was a billboard downtown. Yeah, yeah. there's a billboard down. They've, they've, they've spray painted PS on everything yeah. in the in the surrounding like ten Which is awesome. I'm impressed. I, I mean, it's that. awesome, yeah, and yeah. I and I also like I also do love the look and feel of mm. the, of, of there's a lot of, of the new of yeah, but there's a lot of signage. Yeah. It's, but it's uh, it's interesting because like if you want to take Fringe to people who are normally don't go to Fringe. You have to make it visible, yes. totally. which those flags would Do, have done, yes. yeah. but which, just putting up a table outside the door. You don't know what it's for. There's nothing. No. Which part of me wonders <clears throat> if that's her strategy, trying to get people to PS Patio, mm. or Patio, right. and then they find out about Fringe and then they go. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anytime you <clears throat> implement something new too, mm -hmm. it takes like, you know, some getting used to. And, and I, I certainly thought 
and I'll say that too. I kind of because Fringe always has their thing, right? Yes. Yeah. And I yeah. thought the expanding their borders, welcoming more right. people, you know, and more venues. I thought that would be their thing, and the thing this year is certainly the patio. Yeah. I will maybe say, that's their. <clears throat> You know, they get people to the patio first, they find out, and then they go to shows. I don't know. It's nearly impossible to get tickets to the patio. Totally. They're, they're, that's the other thing. The ticket booth, yeah. that's the other the ticket booth yeah. is like, is tiny. There's it's like maybe two people year. in there. Yeah. It's a literal box office. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. And Bring it in there. That's Bring it. Bring it in there. Yeah. And, and also, like, I don't know what, like, like I was I was standing in line for a long time without it moving at all. Mm. Like, I, like, and I, and like, typically when that happens, I look to the front of the line to see, I'm like, okay, who's... Whose mom is making a fuss at the front, like at the yeah. front of the line, you know? Yeah. But it was just like just somebody mm. waiting, being like, "Can I have my tickets now?" Like it, like yeah. I don't know. The ticketing this this year has like just in general has been a, yeah. a bit. There needs to awesome. be more box office stuff. And yeah, yeah. And that, the, the, the downside, things. I think, one of the unfortunately because it seems like postscript has sort of taken over their focus. Yeah, in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. um, and I would almost hate to see. Um, the kind of thing that where like so if you've ever been to the Edmonton Fringe, yes. you know there's people who go to the Edmonton Fringe and they don't know there's theater involved. Yes, yeah. <laughs> there's a ton there's of so people much party because there's so much there's 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 beer tents, yeah. there's yeah. buskers, there's food trucks, and some people are just there for that, right? Because wow. that's a whole festival within the festival. Yeah, some yeah. people just hang out in that area. <clears throat> and so you'll go and you'll yeah. be like, some want to tell you about your show, and they'll be like. Show? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So it's like... And it's sprawled there for yeah. theaters. I yeah. had that moment yesterday. Yeah. Like, two men came up to me and they're like, oh, like, what music show are you doing? And I'm like, well, I'm doing a Fringe show. And yeah. I like, mm. try to give them my flyer. And they're like, oh, but like, what What else is happening here? Like, did you have a good gig here? And I'm like, no, I'm talking about my Fringe <laughs> Again, show. Again, that's the... That is the... Like, yeah. they, they should be making sure that people who are at Postscript know... It's a theater. It's a yeah. theater festival. Yeah. Yeah. Not just a... Hang out here, get drunk, watch a show on our stage. Yeah, well, I, I, uh... box office would help. Like, oh yeah, yeah. 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 Basically, yeah. if the box office, for my money, because uh, the most successful box office I've ever seen at Fringe was like the last two years at Ed's when mm-hmm. it was at the yeah. uh, the South End. Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. huge tent. Yep, like eight yeah. people yeah. working their ass off. Yeah. Getting in yeah. out, everything was visible. You could see what was selling, what wasn't yeah. selling. You had everything your so fingertips. Yeah. Yeah. And quite frankly, if you took the space, uh, and I like that they've got a permanent food thing in Postscript. That's yeah. a huge help. Yeah. yeah, and it's a good food thing. Mm-hmm. Huge help because I remember, like, even at Ed's occasion, yeah. you'd be like, "Oh, really? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the burgers that taste yeah. like frisbees don't." <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, but, uh, they had like if you took where the bar was last year, that mm. long expanse of tent, and turned that into a box office. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then you end like sign the hell out of that. Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. even that if I'm yeah. you know drinking, be like. Well, box office what the shit like what yeah. do I have to buy tickets for this it's like no you can buy tickets for insert yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so what have you guys have you guys had a chance to see any shows yet 12 shows 12 what? shows what wow. wow holy shit Rebecca alright well we're all gonna leave I have a list here I'm ready to tell you about yeah. them I've seen three so what I wanna know <laughs> is I any. what I wanna know is what shows have you seen that you've loved Quite a few, actually. Okay. Um, that being said, and I'm sure you guys do this too, I sort of always front load my fringe with shows that are not, not necessarily a sure thing, but just when I read the description, I go, I'm intrigued. That mm. is a topic I want to know more mm. about. Sure. Um, so I'll just give you the shows I saw, and then maybe I'll pick one or two to sort of spotlight. Yeah. Okay. So uh, for kids' shows, I saw The Princess of the Tower. Uh, and then for musicals, I saw One Small Step, Candor and Ebb, The Preposterous Predicament of Polly Peel, mm-hmm. Act One, mm-hmm. uh, as well as, no, those were all the musicals. Uh, for comedy, I saw a 6N review, uh, a Martin Dockery's Bike Trip, which is replace, replacing Operation Bowling from mm-hmm. the program. Uh, then, just for like solo shows, The Honeymoon Period is finally over. Um, Bike face, obviously. I went to my own opening. Uh, oh, sorry. A few, two more comedies. Police cops in space, uh, as well as I'm missing one. Hold on. Well, that's all I wrote down off the top okay, of my head, okay. but I think I saw more. That's okay. Wow. Um, I'm trying to see 47. I'm trying to break my. Wow. Wow. Um, you know what it is? This year I'm producing, right? So yes, mm. I am doing a lot of work, but it can go to any coffee shop in the United yes. States. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, also, like, just because. Mm. This year I had some like vacation hours left for my Joe job. Mm. I was like, hey guys, I'm taking next week as my vacation week. Peace. Mm-hmm. So I can just yeah. schedule yeah. whenever. Yeah. I'm pulling a chua. Nice. Yeah. Going full chua. Um, yeah. I'm going full chua. Going I got the chua. 30 pass. Uh, David, uh, my hubby and I are just that needs splitting to be a, the pass. A button, nice. By the way, for people who see more than 40 shows. Full yeah. chua. I'm going, I'm there going you full go. chua. His record is full chua. 90. 
Three. That's I, just, I don't even know I how you do that. I, don't. I, I thought 47 was like That's pushing myself yeah. to like my spiritual limits. I don't know. I, I, think, I think, honestly, I think he's pulling a prestige scam. It was actually like, <laughs> two Derek Chewins. Two Derek The brothers yeah, yeah, that just yeah. never, they've never fessed up to it. <laughs> now I'm just thinking it's like two Michael Caines with Derek yes. Chua masks. Uh, I mean, yeah. he did keep going. It's my Derek Chua. Yeah. Well, that doesn't sound like your <laughs> <laughs> very Cockney accent. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Wayne. You were Wayne. great in Batman Begins. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll sort of just pick one from each category. Mm. Uh, I know I only saw one kid's show, but I must say The Princess of the Tower. It's like those Pixar movies that are also meant for adults. I highly recommend it. Nice. Uh, much like the cast of like uh, Once the Musical. Each of these kids plays like seven instruments. What? I say kids, they're grown adults. Okay, okay. But, um, <laughs> I was like, children, uh, what? <laughs> yeah, and, and it's just a very sweet story. Uh, the klezmer music that Scott Christian has composed is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, I was thoroughly impressed. Like, I was going in like a little skeptical. I was like, yeah, what instruments? Are you going to play the harmonica a bunch? But like, mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. people are talented There's musicians. No bagpipes, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> we can't all learn the bagpipes. Okay? Also, the harmonica is a great instrument. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as far as like musicals, I still think Candor and Ebb is standing up for me the most. Ryan Hines is such a compelling storyteller. Um, and I just am so glad that Cabaret is starting to actually get a spotlight. Yeah. It's very closely related to doing solo shows, so yeah. my heart is in it. Um, he just, he had me from start to finish. Nice. The other musicals were great, but that one just sort of stuck with me and made me sort of think about what kind of art I want to create. And I think that's a sign of a good show. Yeah, yeah. As far as comedy, um, I'm a little biased on this one because I've seen them before, but Police Cops in Space that name alone. was so funny. Yeah. So, just a bit of background, these kids dominate yeah. the Edinburgh Fringe. Mm. I saw them after lining up for like two hours in the rain, being yeah. like, this better be good because I didn't have lunch. <laughs> and it was so good that I saw it like three more times wow, wow. and like lost sleep over getting in. Uh, mm. And so this is like their second one. Um, they are very talented physical comedians. Mm. They uh, obviously have training in mime and, and Lecoq and stuff like that, but also their improv and sketch is so spot on. Mm-hmm. Um, essentially, they are sort of parodying any cop farce but also like CSI at the same yeah. time oh, yes. and kind of just making fun yeah. of everything as they go along mm. um, what impressed me more was I met the stage manager while I was at Toronto Fringe and she was like just so you know only half of this is scripted and I was like they're very smart comedians. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, Police Cops in Space for comedy. Uh, and as far as solo shows, I still think the, the Honeymoon Period is officially over by Gemma Ward is my favorite that I've seen so far. Um, she's very talented in telling stories and one unique thing about her shows is she doesn't only like personify all the characters, she personifies like objects in the room. Like there's one point where her and I guess like the boyfriend she's talking to are having a serious conversation and she's also personifying the fire wavering as it gets more awkward in the conversation. <laughs> or like there's one point where she's like petting her cat and crying and then the cat gives like a whole monologue about how he's gonna eat the hamster tonight. Like, <laughs> it's, it's just, it's smart, it's nice. funny. That's awesome. Accessible to all ages. I think that was the coolest thing. Mm. I went to her opening and it was like 9 to 99 was there. Nice. Wow. Wow. Cool. There you go. Oh, and a 6 end review is just funny. Okay. Just go see it. You're a Torontonian, you're gonna love it. Yeah. Nice. And they basically hypothesize what would be required to make a 6 end review <laughs> in the eyes of Glenn Sumi. Okay. And eventually they get audience suggestions and incorporate it into like an improv scene at the end. Nice. Was very impressive because the one that I saw included um, uh, a monologue about a fire hydrant. It happened. Okay. <laughs> it was funny. Great. Yeah. Damn. What have, what have other people seen um, that they loved? Oh, I saw Featherweight. And I saw Prank. <laughs> <laughs> this seems planned. This seems planned. Danny, who is on first? Well, I'm seeing you know show at five today, so move. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm excited to see Lighters in the Air, too. So, yes. Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah, I'm that's all good. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I also... I, um, featherweight... Um, I've already talked to Tom drunkenly about it, but uh, but it, it it is it is hilarious, and it's also it's um, it's uh, it's it's a secret play about 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 some cultural issues in 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 our world uh, uh, nowadays. Like it's like it's this it's this sort of like American godsy like mm. comedy thing, but um, but there's uh, there's some definite um, parallels to be drawn um, to 
it's a good, I don't want to like, I don't want to like, I want people to be able to draw their own. It's sure. Sort of a la Bright Lights last year, where okay. where you you could you could interpret it like one of, one of several ways. Um, uh, but I came out of it being like, wow, that's like, yeah, yeah, oh, that's about a lot more than just what it was mm. about. Oh, um, I enjoy that. Yeah. Nice. Subtext. Nice. Yeah. Um, so so see that one. <laughs> Uh, but I also Here's our 20 bucks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and um, and also I, I saw anywhere by Michael Ross Albert uh, at uh, at the factory backspace um, a couple nights ago, and it is uh, it's great. It's it's super tense. It's it's um, it's Cass Van Wyck and Courtney Ching Lancaster. Um, I hope I got your name right, Courtney. Um, uh, but they, uh, they're both incredible, mm -hmm. like incredible actors, um, uh, you know, like stage tested. They've, they've, yeah. they've, they've done it a bunch. Yeah, yeah. Cass was great um, in Act 25, really. Yeah. She yeah. was amazing. And I just saw Courtney Nixon's last Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Awesome. They're both, they're both yeah. fantastic. And it's just this like tight, like sort of, sort of like, um, pressure cooker of a play. Ooh, I love uh, that stuff. Yeah. Yours. It's, it's, it's great. It's very tense. And then like, and then like very strangely funny at times for like, <laughs> Like the 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 laughters, like the, the the laughs in it come out come out at weird places, and you're like, oh, thank God, that's there. <laughs> 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 but it's uh, yeah, it's great. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, I'm having a so I'm I'm doing the land acknowledgement at Featherweight, and also as a producer, um, I'm just so used to a things going completely haywire right at showtime and being, being ready for crazy. We're a small venue. We're we're sixty seats, and a bunch of those seats are bench. Yeah, or are like yeah. our bench seating. So the amount of times I have to be like, hi, you're now on a date with the person next to you. Yeah, get in there. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's kind of really thrown a wrench into my fringing. Um, plus, World Cup is on. So as a sports <laughs> nerd, throughout featherweight, all I want in rehearsals, I was just like, I just want to watch <laughs> fucking soccer. Um, so I'm trying to balance like the important games with with uh, fringing stuff. So so far, I've only seen Prank. Um, it took three shows for featherweight to settle to a point where I'm like, okay, yeah. house isn't on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so I went and saw Prank yesterday, and um, uh, as Danny did with uh, his uh, show Cloud. Um, I don't see a lot of sci-fi that isn't like I feel like there's this weird dead space in sci-fi where we jump from today to like we're like in space and living <laughs> yeah. in pods and I'm half <laughs> dog for some reason. Yeah. Uh, and what's really cool about uh, Prank is it's even though it's very much a show about modern YouTube culture, it's modern YouTube culture through the lens of the next generation mm. and that is both terrifying and fascinating. Yeah. And Danny really plums that for kind of like what. We make a lot of jokes about the damage we're doing to future generations with our kind of fame obsession and our our, our uh, kind of like Wild West approach to the internet where we're just like, whatever, it's the internet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's really fun kind of, uh, it's, it's, again, it's weird because I'm just like pumping your show. <laughs> but um, it's really fun watching how um, the show plays with the idea of, okay, well, let's jump this ahead. We'll also comment on what's going on, but also telling a narrative that takes place in that. So it's not just mm -hmm. like, because also the other things I feel that there's a real danger, particularly with sci-fi, just being like, look, this cool concept. All right, peace. Yeah. And then the characters yeah, yeah, yeah. are like, I am a mouthpiece for cool ideas. And they're like, shut <laughs> up, robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so figuring out how these characters can have like their own journeys and their own emotional um, storylines that we care about and engage with while also weaving in kind of this meta commentary on technology. Well, also weirdly, it's it's set in the future, but it's not like a bleeding sci-fi mm. where, you know, they are holograms and their eyes are made of lasers. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's still a very human and accessible story, but that just happens to be in sci-fi. And as a huge sci-fi nerd, I feel like for a lot of people, something like Prank is what could be a great, great gateway drug into actually mm. enjoying sci-fi, mm. because it's not, you know, sexy sci-fi robot lady in space. It's yeah. like, no, here's two kids who are fucked up by their parents. Also, like a tremendously gross and weird element of parenting and fame and mm -hmm. internet culture that like I hadn't even considered. Mm -hmm. Right. Because like I love like, you know, uh, you know, um, Charlie bit me and like David goes to the dentist. Yeah. And all those things are really funny, but then there was that case not too long ago about um, that kid who was crying about being bullied. Yeah. Oh, and everyone yes. was like, oh, this is so tragic. And then when they did more research, like, he was being bullied because he was being really racist to a bunch of kids yeah. at his school. Yeah. And they all uh, fought back. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh, 
because like not only did we all have this mo moment with this like sad child, yeah. then we're like, oh, but you're problematic, and oh, it's super problematic that I was in on that, and like, yeah, well, yeah. well, yeah. well and also like yeah. a bunch of like NHL people and like NFL people were like, hey, bud, you can come see our games for free. Like, we're gonna yeah. give you like a tour, oh, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. backstage or whatever yeah. you call and it. And he's like, just don't kneal. Uh, yeah, yeah, like actually, but, that's uh, very yeah. strange. Yeah. So all that going to say, like uh, for me, like my favorite part of Fringe, and this ties into my love of Thunderdome slash Postscript slash Onsteads, <laughs> is getting to talk about shows and like have those conversations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and I think one of the best things Fringe has to offer is that idea of like you get eject ejected out into the world with a bunch of other people who are just fired up to talk about theater yeah. and um, yeah for me like if I can come out of a show it's one thing to have just had a really nice time I'm like cool I feel great but a show like Prank is the kind of thing where I'm like oh great I can go and talk to people about this now like my brain's firing and I've got a yeah, bunch yeah, of things yeah. I want to think about and explore um, so that's what I've seen. Uh, I'm actually seeing all of your shows, I hope, Sweet. which is good. Uh, I'm really where there be like someone on the panel where I'm like, I don't want to see more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually pre booked for all of them. Well, oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. You just keep showing us up. <laughs> uh, no, you know what it is? Like, She's if I miss twice. one show, it messes up my entire schedule. Right. Right. Yeah. So I, I've actually, there's like only one spot I can see your show. There's only one spot I can see your show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, but I'm really, I'm actually, I'm very excited about uh, Police Cops in Space, largely because their write-up is great. Yeah. Um, mm. So they're, they're going to the most guys. dangerous er place on Earth, space. space. Which just yeah. <laughs> also, I'm just going to say, glow-in-the-dark fight scene. Oh, yes. Oh, oh my goodness. goodness. Yeah, uh, yeah so, so I'm excited for them. Um, mm -hmm. Always excited for more on Jasp, just because they always make me feel the feels. Yeah. We'll laugh in the laughs. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, my uh, my friend stage managing uh, Lairs in the Air, so I've oh, sort of like Moni's has been giving me the inside scoop on a bunch of that. So and I loved your see. preview at the oh. at Derek Two's musical mm -hmm. night. I wanted to say that on <laughs> podcast. <Yeah. laughs> there you go. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's a it's a bit of a weird fringe for me because of because I'm writing, directing, producing mm -hmm. Featherweight. My brain has been and I came right off another show that ended mid June. Right. So like it's just been that, and yeah. now that I can actually breathe, uh, it's just today for the first time did I go through and star the the personal interest shows. Like there's all yeah. the ones I'm like, okay, here's what my yeah. Yes. Doing yep. those. Yes. But it was literally today yes. was the first day I was like, oh cool, they're police cops <laughs> and yeah. they're in space. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, it's a retelling of this. I love that yeah, yeah, story. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, one, right, I'm being a bad friend. <laughs> one show I actually also wanted to shout out, and this guy I got the on the same top 15 list as Janelle. Um, his name is Adam Schwartz. He's a comedian from Winnipeg. His show is called, oh please let me get this right. Um, Asperger's uh, A Tale of a Social nice. Mystery. Yes, yes, yes. So I've seen his first one, which came here a few years ago, mm. and I loved it so much that I was doing, uh, I think, one of the coffee shop girls the same year, and I kept shouting it out at the end of my show because mm. I wanted everyone wow. to see it. Um, so I saw the second installment, uh, it's at the Annex Theatre. He is such a good storyteller and makes such good jokes that are not necessarily self deprecating. You actually you learn more about Asperger's and understand him as a human being so much more after spending 60 minutes with him mm. when you leave the theater, but also you are laughing your head off at nice. the same time. That's great. Yeah. And I think that's a mark of a good comedian, someone who can like tell a story and you not only learn something, you don't realize you've learned something. <laughs> and, yeah. and and also like he's making you laugh. It's, mm. it's very funny. Also, half of the things he talks about, we all can relate to, and the other half, it's just so cool to hear it as like a perspective because mm -hmm. so often people that do not have Asperger's are talking about yes. it. Yeah. 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 It's great to hear yeah. someone be like, hey, here is my platform yeah. and here's what I have to say. Yeah. So I think it's well worth anyone's time and it, and he very much deserves all the pre-press mm -hmm. that he's been getting. I loved his show. Awesome. Uh, Belinda, Janelle, have you guys yeah. had a chance to see anything? Well, I want to split myself in half so I can like go and see everything and yeah, yeah, also yeah, like, sure. I'm seeing it for tomorrow. Yes. Wow. So, right. And I think five on Monday. Those yeah. are Damn. So yeah. certainly excited to see Bike Face yeah. because I also just <clears throat> Anyone who does solo work and females who do right? solo yeah. work, I'm yeah. there. Mm. Yeah. Um, really excited to see Josephine, uh, a cabaret, yeah, uh, a yeah. burlesque yeah. cabaret dream so play. Yeah. yeah, I'm so excited. They're one of our fringe friends that we cool. kind of connected up with and trying to support each other. And um, super excited to see that prank. Uh, yeah. I could go on, but like I just I want to <laughs> see so many things, yeah. and I'm also like, God, you got to take care of yourself as yeah, an you actor. Do. You do, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So um, you need to have a voice. Yeah. I'm, in, yeah. I'm in that boat where it's it's like, oh God, like I want to see like I'm going to see your show. I'm going to see I want to see all your shows, <laughs> and it's also like, when do I have time to see all these that shows? Yeah. Yeah. As, a, as an artist, yes. like as an actor mm -hmm. in in the fringe, because yeah, you have to take care of mm -hmm. and you're singing and you're singing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so Have you had a chance to see anything yet, or is it all like I'm going to see things? I'm going. To sit, like yeah. today, I'm gonna see uh, generally hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. um, see you see there. yeah, oh great! And then I'm seeing D and D and seeing Robert. Those are the three ones, the three that I'm have tickets for, <laughs> and then I'm gonna buy tickets for our shows. Awesome. And yeah, yeah, 
So I've only managed to see one show so far because between working a day job and yeah. uh, rehearsing yeah. the yeah. site specific, oh, I managed to take yesterday off because yeah. life needed to be taken care of. But there was yeah. also some time. Mm-hmm. I saw Al Francis. I think I'm dead. Mm-hmm. Cool. Which. Um, Al is exhausted by telling this story, <laughs> but it is um, a, a story about realizing that you, among many things, realizing that you have perhaps a, a, a mental disability or, 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 or a problem like, like bipolar or depression and learning how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't really realize that's where he's going until about halfway through. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And he tells it, like I said, at a breakneck speed, and it's really quite cool. quite awesome. Mm-hmm. And he's been telling it for the last year. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, across Australia and North America. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't want to shout out one other one that I haven't seen yet, but saw the previous iteration of uh, The Free Up, that also hasn't been getting good reviews, but hasn't been getting a lot of press. Uh, but Enjoy the Hostilities is a... Mm-hmm. Oh, so oh yes, yes. Robin Black show. Yeah, yeah so it's a Robin yeah. Black show um, that uh, Graham Isidore helped uh, mm-hmm. write and develop. Mm-hmm. And it's, in terms of, yeah, like, kind of exhausting weird life stories. Yeah. And also, I don't know, yeah, with a solo show, I always like getting a little peek into, like, who the person is. And I didn't know mm-hmm. Robin Black at all. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, He's looking very interesting. Like, yeah, yeah. And so, like, Graham's a buddy of mine. I kept being like, oh, yeah, I'm like, working with Robin Black. And there'd be that moment of, like... <laughs> and I'm like, I, I got nothing, man. Cool. It sounds I'm like a cool with, dude. Yeah. Uh, I'm like working with Michael Moose. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Terrence from Kim's Convenience. Um, but uh, speaking, I've got a funny story about that in a sec. But um, yeah, so uh, anyway, but I, I've seen various iterations because, yeah, Robin Black has led a crazy life. He's a glam rocker. Uh, he was an MMA fighter. And now he's a professional MMA commentator. Mm-hmm. And basically, his stories are exactly as nuts as you'd imagine. Um, and Graham kind of worked with him to like really. Scrim does a lot of storytelling shows in and around Toronto, as well as performing the personal like, situational anarchy and uh, that sort of thing. And he really massaged these stories, and it's been fascinating watching the condensing of, of these stories. This is, I've seen like one that's now maybe 10 minutes of the show, it used to be like a 25 minute wow. like full thing, and mm. watching these stories get honed down, honed down. So anyway, they're uh, Bovine, um, Bovine, um, Sex, you know, Club. Bovine mm-hmm. Sex Club. Bovine Sex Club. Um, but uh, yeah, again, I haven't seen the Fringe iteration, but they just did it in Ireland, and like by all accounts, it's really it went very well. I had nice. quite a few friends mm-hmm. that, at the festival. Oh. So what's hot? Like cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So nice. just a, another mm-hmm. one that I'd shout out because they. It's unique. Also, I always love seeing someone who isn't a theater performer doing a solo show that isn't just their natural thing. Yeah. It's, it was also yeah. interesting watching yeah. Robin go from this is my glam rocker kind of person. And it's every stance he takes on stage, he looks like a glam rocker. Mm. <laughs> and it was interesting because the early show was very much more like, I'm doing I'm doing my bit between songs, and now he's fully into a storytelling mode. Which mm. is awesome. Interesting. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I want to thank you guys uh, for doing this, and uh, we'll do this again next week. Yay! Yay! Thank you for having us, Phil. Yes. Happy thank Fringe. Yeah. Merry Fringe, Mr. Merry one and all. <laughs> God bless us, everyone. Yes. <laughs> This has been a Homebody Productions production.